God, Heavenly Father, we are trusting you. It isn't easy, but we and we struggle with trusting you. But when we worry, we're putting that kind of a in an imbalance in our lives. And so help us, Lord, to to work toward trusting you and not worrying about tomorrow and the problems in the day because you are walking through the day with us. And so as we worship you today, Lord, just help us to remember that you are always with us and open our hearts and our ears and our minds to your word and to the praises that we give you. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. La vida loca. Yes, the crazy life. We talked about this is the day the Lord has made. That was the first week, and we talked about how God has made the day, and we ought to enjoy the day, and to remember that it, it, the day is a precious gift. And then last week, we talked about gratitude, being grateful in the day, even when the junk comes, even when the tough times come, to, to be thankful that we are alive, to be thankful that we have a God, and to be thankful that God is God and he will be with us in our journey of life in those 24 hours. Well, today we're talking about the tyranny of worry in our day. Worry is the great plague of life. Whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, worry is there. And it crosses all educational lines, it crosses economic lines, racial lines, gender lines, and age lines, it doesn't matter. We all worry, some of us more than others. Some of us uh, um, dwell on it, and as we get older, we worry less, but we worry about our families more, and you know, it goes on and on. What we worry about changes in our lifetime, um, in our seasons of our lives. And so, uh, <laughs> ah, that's a good picture. Okay, so, uh, Mary Beth, do you wanna put up the first uh, slide? Worrying is a waste of time. It doesn't change anything. It messes with your mind and steals your happiness. Don't worry about walking a mile in my shoes. Just try a day thinking in my head, right? Because we all worry and our minds go. One day you'll look back and realize that you worry too much about the things that don't really matter. Do you have another one, Mary? Worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but doesn't get you anywhere, right? We just rock and rock and we're doing something, but we don't get anywhere. Another one. That's it? Okay. <laughs> one of the slides that we were talking about is I miss being a little kid with no stress, no worries, no cares in the world, right? How many of us have said that? I know I just said that recently. Oh, I wish I was a kid again where I didn't have to worry and do all this crazy stuff. So often there is a subconscious thing going on in our minds, right? We believe that if we worry enough, we're gonna change the outcome of our problem, our situation, our difficulty, or we can guide it. You know, if we worry, then we can guide it a little bit, right? So. Oh, by the way, I want to tell you that uh, worry comes from the old English word that relates to strangle. Now think about that. How appropriate is that? You know, worry strangles our peace of mind. Worry strangles our enjoyment of life. Well, worry affects us physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, right? Mental, uh, Medical experts, they say that our overall health is affected by worry. And so, you know, our nervous system is involved in worry and our hormone levels change, our blood pressure changes, right? Heart rate and what goes on to the heart, um, what um, <laughs> is affected by worry. And so, so if you are a worrier, God wants to heal you. If you are a warrior, God wants to heal you. He has given us his presence, his protection, his provision, and his peace. 
We all have a choice. We can keep on worrying and ruin our mental health, our physical health, be emotionally on edge all the time, retard our spiritual growth, and continue to miss out on God's unlimited resources because we don't tap into them because we'll rather worry than ask God for help. Or we can cast all our cares. We can cast our cares on the strong shoulders of our loving God. First Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. First Peter 5, verse 7. Cast all your cares, cast all your anxieties, cast all your worries on Jesus Christ, on his strong shoulders. He is the good shepherd who will guide us and lead us and take his rod and his staff to guide us and lead us. He cares for you and me. But if the truth be told, we often find ourselves filled with apprehension, fear, tension. We spend an awful lot of time worrying. That's the truth. We worry about how much money we have. Will we have enough for retirement? Will we have enough to pay the bills? Will our paycheck and the bills work out together at the end of the month? We worry about approaching deadlines. We worry about whether we'll have a job or not. We worry about where our next job will come from. We worry about our marriages that are on the rocks. We worry about our teenagers that they won't get involved in drugs and alcohol and drop, drink and drive. We worry about uh, what people think of us. What do they really think of us? We worry about how we look and how we present ourselves. We worry about a lot of things. We have opportunities to practice the ways of worry all the time. We wring our hands, we bite our nails, we rip our nails. I know somebody rips their nails continually. Or we yell a little bit because we're anxious and worried or we withdraw from people. We eat a little bit more to soothe the soul. We have our comfort foods, right? We spend a little more we go shopping. When we get stressed, some of us women go shopping. And then we feel like we're more in control. We, you know, uh, we have what we want to present ourselves in a good way. We take a few acids to calm the stomach, right? We, tr we ingest a little alcohol to numb the anxiety a little bit. We smoke, some of us, not me, but some, some of us smoke a little weed to relax, because that seems more acceptable. And I know you're giggling, so, you know, but it's, that's the truth. I know people, that's what they do. Worry cannot change the outcome of anything. Worry cannot change the outcome of anything, but sure can tr change you, can it? From someone who is pe peaceful to someone who's apprehensive and tense all the time. Worry is a tool of Satan. We need to know that. We need to remember that. Worry is a tool of Satan to get us to not trust God, not trust in his power, his presence, his provision, his peace, his benevolence, his mercy, his grace, his, his, his love for you and I, his care for you and I. Satan wants us to forget all that. And Satan will use the emotion of worry and fear and tension and apprehension to get us not to believe in God, not to trust in God, but to trust in ourselves. And let me tell you, if we're trusting in ourselves, we got a problem. God is not in control, says Satan. God does not care for you, says Satan. Satan will try to convince us that we know better. That 
I know better what I need, what I want, what's necessary and good for my life. And Satan will try to get us confused and doubt God's best for our life. Remember that. God has the best in mind for you and me. We need to trust that. And that's not easy. But that's what God says. I have the very best in mind for you. I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. But Satan wants us to believe that God has forgotten us and that God is too busy doing other things. And so Satan gets us to focus in the wrong direction, focus on the woulda, coulda, shouldas in life, to focus on dread for the future, the unknowns in our lives, to focus on what if and the maybes of life, focusing on the stuff that we have no control over. The correct focus we need to remember is Jesus Christ. Remembering his promises and holding on to his love, his graciousness, his grace, his unconditional love for you. The correct focus is on Jesus Christ, praying to him for things like wisdom and guidance and strength and perseverance and hope. Praying to him for perseverance in the storms and the struggles of our lives, to pray to him for wisdom. When we begin to worry, because when we worry, we're taking the problem back and putting it on our laps. When we pray, we're handing it over to him. And we're looking for his wisdom and his guidance and his perspective and uh, perseverance. From Philippians uh, four, chapter 4, do not worry about anything, but with prayer, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God, and then the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So don't worry about anything, but with prayer, give thanks to God that he is God and we're not, and that we have a God to turn to. Give thanks to God that he is God and that we can turn to him and ask him to be with us in the journey of the 24 hours, 1,400 uh, minutes in the day. And so, yes, I'm saying, replace worry with prayer. Replace it with a communion with God with a constant conversation with God. Instead of worrying, pray. We have a Father in heaven who is real, a Father in heaven who loves us, a Father in heaven who has promised that he will provide for us, a Father in heaven who promises that he wants the very best for us. So pray. Martin Luther, our namesake as Lutherans, Martin Luther says, pray and let God worry. Sounds pretty good to me. Prayer is the place to let your anxieties go, to hand off to God in Christ Jesus, to hand off to God that which troubles you because he's more able to carry our anxiety, our fears, our worries, our situations and circumstances in our lives. There is no problem, no worry, no anxiety, no situation that is too big or too small that you cannot take it before our Savior. Nothing is too big for God and nothing is too small for God and that we need to remember. Nothing is too small for God to care about. He cares about the sparrows. He cares about uh, the wild flowers. And Jesus says if he cares about those things, how much more important are you and me to our God? So 
Nothing is too big or too little to bring before God. Remember, worry is negative, prayer is positive. Worry, worry tears down, prayer builds up. Worry forgets God, and prayer remembers God. Who can add a single day? Who can add a single moment to our lives by worrying? 84,400 seconds. You can't add a single day. take away our worry. Help us to learn to come to you in prayer and to lay it at your feet, trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only you, not trusting in ourselves and our ways. Lord, when worry comes, help us to say, get behind me, Satan. Help us to look to you for our strength in the day, for our hope in the day. As your son, Jesus Christ said, tomorrow has enough worries in it, so don't borrow the trouble from tomorrow. Deal with the trouble of today, but deal with it, with our Father in heaven. And so we are asking you, Lord, to come and be with us and walk with us. Help us to have a constant communication with you, constant communion and conversation with you throughout the day so that 
we might find that comfort and that peace that you are walking with us. Heavenly Father, there are so many who, who are in need of your healing touch, and there are so many who will have concerns and worry about their loved ones. Help us to trust in you as the great physician and that you have the very best in mind for us. And so we are trusting you, Lord, as we pray for your healing touch to, and your care to be with Kennedy and Joanna and Henry and Kelly and Chris and John and Peter and Pat and Sue.